Yeah, what a game that was. Starting off with already a bit of restlessness in the in the lanes, a bit of musical lanes going on in uh, the early stages of the game, and ending on in an well, basically NIP bashing their heads against the wall. That was <laughs> four clovers, and at some point the wall broke. It happened. It held it for took very a long, long time, yeah. though. Yeah. There was a point where I'm like, okay, are they actually throwing this game? You know what I mean? They were like constantly, no, constantly. No, they, they were throwing. Yeah, the yeah. Game. I was yeah. like, this is not. Not great, you know what I mean? You're in a, such a commanding position and it takes you so long to... It was, it was that mid-push where Aero got blown up immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a great play by EGM Solo Echo and then he bought back. But there was nowhere to TP to. He had to TP to Tier 1 tower and mm -hmm. then just walk all the way. And then Limp also died and he also <laughs> bought back. I was like, okay, well then. <laughs> and they like, that, that mistake let them hold for like 10, 15 minutes yeah. more. Yeah, we were talking about how NIP really shines in those games where they're able to farm heavy and then get to the late game to have a farmed carry. In this game, it was the complete opposite. At the beginning, yes. they out 4CL'd 4CL. They won that hyper-aggressive aggressive kind of Dota. And then once it got to the late game, it seemed like they didn't know what to do. They could just charge forward, and then those well, unfortunate well, plays happened, as you mentioned. I think uh, Andy did a g uh, good job pointing out that... Right, ...without actually dying and saving his teammates time and time again. Oh, you know why he, that will happen during the mid-fight? It's because they were trying to base... Uh, the mid racks mm -hmm. without getting any detection. That glimmer cape yeah, saved like three, four <laughs> lives. Yeah. How that? How can that happen? Like it's beyond me. I like the Pycat one for the refresher as well. We noted that he didn't have the mana pool for it. You saw him constantly buying mangoes that late mm -hmm. into the game. It was the only that way that legit, he could yeah. double ult uh, with the refresher. Really smart plays. I do have a clip for it though. Well, for that clip, uh, yes. we are gonna be going to the luminous analysis. Okay, I got two clips coming up, and uh, one of them is dedicated to Shane, so let's jump in. Ooh. Alright, nice. so right in the beginning, Shane says you should pick Gyro, because Gyro is an amazing team fight. So can we pause real fast here? In this situation, it looked like the uh, NIP is in kind of an awkward position because the Fissure is so good, but if you think really think about it, these wards are actually doing a very good job of keeping uh, both EGM as well as Limp from coming in. But what we actually don't see, and we kind of have to look at the lower left-hand corner of the map. This guy over here, this purple dot, yeah, that's Era coming in. So the fight is going to center around here, but the threat is going to come in from the bottom right. So let's, I'm pausing quickly if I, they're, they're like, oh, Seal Kid, you know, there's Limp over here. Limp goes in and do, does a very smart thing to bay out and drops a coil and suddenly it back of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, this is the massacre. Oh my. Oh, five hero call down. That I think is. one person was repelled. Oh, yeah, no, Pycat was okay. repelled. Four hero call down. So they kill five. four on the right side immediately. And after this point in game, Gyrocopter went for the aforementioned uh, SMY and just, you know, just tried to go for the. Oh, I mean, we thought they were going to win the game right after that fight, yeah, right? Yeah, I was like. You get an mm -hmm. ultra kill on Era, he gets amazingly fat, and uh, the Queen of Pain barely makes it out. Like, barely makes it out, like, with no health. Okay, so this is like 20 minutes after after some serious <laughs> NIP throw, right? Like mm -hmm. they push mid by buybacks. All right, so it's like okay, you got refresher on Queen of Pain. You're supposed to win this fight. Great two man echo. Okay, I want you guys to pay really close attention how the Sonic waves go, because the Sonic waves obviously uh, determines the fight. And this is the, this is have two Sonic waves as well. Yeah, two fight. Sonic waves in a row. So Queen of Pain, one first Sonic wave hits three target, hits area through BKB, kills the puck. And then hand skin. All right, so this Sonic Wave is supposed to win the fight. If you hit Era again, you just flat out win the fight. Yeah. Watch PyCat. The hope, the it's dreams. So close. Sonic Wave. Woo! It kills hand skin. Yeah, but Era's positioning. It there. kills hand skin, and that's freaking it. So that's why they really lost this fight. So Such to a me, heads up play from Era. Yeah. That was the best moment for them to win the or come back, start coming back and win the game. But that second Sonic Wave was such a big whiff that essentially did nothing. And then the tombstone on top of the hill as well, mm. just constantly being there. Nobody focused it. Yeah, the make sure that this, this guy Skyrath Mage in this fight couldn't ba could barely do anything because there's too many zombies. On Another thing I like about Ninja the Pajamas draft is they have these like two beefy supports, an Undying and Ogre. So in the team fights, you're less likely to want to focus them because mm -hmm. like Ogre is like a monster, and nearly every single fight. You know the seal kid running around on full HP because he gets no, so he gets all the stuns off. He gets the ignite on loads of people like constantly. It's yeah, 
pretty hard to deal with them. I think PyCat made an excellent decision to buy the Refresh Orb because mm -hmm. he recognized the longer these fights drag out, there's more decay, there's more poison wards, there's yeah. more ignite. So the only way they could win the fight is through massive burst damage. That's why he got went Dagon after the Refresher as well. Yeah, like they just that. need to win the fight right from the get go. And those YOLO Omni Sashes, that helps in that process. Unfortunately, when you miss those spells, well, that's it. Yeah. Well, uh, we are actually having the opportunity to ask some questions uh, to a winner of previous match, Hanskin, Undying Player. Let's go to a, a winner's interview. Hanskin, welcome. Hello, thanks. Hello, thanks indeed for to you as well. I want to ask you, that game, absolutely crazy from a spectator point of view, how do you keep your cool as a player? Uh, I mean, it's it's quite rough, honestly. I thought we had the game pretty, like we had the game in such a, like we had uh, such a dominating lead. We yeah. took two, two sets of Raxes, I believe, pretty early. And then we had the last one as well. We sort of felt that we had to push a lot, but they seemed to stress as well, like, when we took Roshans, when we finally realized that we, hey, we can slow down a little bit, yeah, we were all good, I guess. But he was a little bit nervous in, in some parts. Who is the admit. one to make sure that everybody stays cool, stays calm? Doesn't throw? Um, I mean, that's like... That's like a, everyone has a part in that, I think. It's not really one person that tells everyone, hey, we're fine or whatever. Like, we're, we're a group of friends, so we try to keep... Like, we calm ourselves down in between everyone, pretty okay. much. It's very important that game for sure. Yeah, I I want to ask a question about Chessy. As your like, is he still your coach? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he is. Um, like, how does how does he coach you? And like, does it help having a coach? Like, a, just a, a sixth kind of opinion on the game. Like, how, how does it work? Yeah, I definitely think it helps a lot. Uh, he helps us watch our scrims and like our boot camps and stuff like that. And like, it's it's so good to to have someone that is not in the game and watching and can see all the numbers. You know. Yeah. Um. So, you know, like a lot of the times when you play, you can watch the replay afterwards and you're like, oh, you know, like you see, you yeah. see stuff that you don't see otherwise. And now we already have that guy while we play already. So that's, that's huge for us. Um, I have a question about your roster. Obviously, you and VP is the only two major teams that haven't got a roster change since TI5. Um, how yeah. big of an advantage do you think you get over all the other teams that are just not only trying out a new patch, but trying out new teammates as well? I think there's both advantages and disadvantages of having the same roster uh, because like one thing is the teamwork that we have and like the like the experience we have playing together that is obviously super good for us but at the same time it's pretty hard to deal with all these new teams because you don't know what to expect from them mm -hmm. you know all the players and all their reputations and what they've done before but you don't know what the new teams are going to do like you see all these uh, new teams like monkey business or five junks they're just pulling out crazy strats all the time so that's their advantage, I suppose. But I think it both the both sides has their pros and cons, and I don't mind staying with the same roster. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you about Venomancer. He has not been getting much love on this patch or even the patch prior. I know it's a hero that you guys used to play a lot, uh, particularly in the mid lane. Seeing him in more of a driver's seat that match was pretty cool. Thoughts about Veno on this patch? Do you think 6.85 made him a little more powerful? Is it just a pocket strat for you guys? Where, where do you stand with uh, the Banana Mancer? Um, I think the hero has always been good, honestly. Like we used to run it, as you said, uh, in patches where it, where it was never really very popular. Uh, I don't think this patch necessarily made him any stronger. I don't think he was touched at all. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I think just we saw a few teams running it in previous matches this week, I believe, but not so much before. I think the hero is it's super legit, but you just gotta have a player that's willing to play it because it's kind of like. <laughs> I'm here to play, you know, just run around and <laughs> toss shit around. Like, you don't really make plays up and you just, you're just chilling around. Yeah, that, but I, I think the hero is legit and you can run it for sure. That 0 4 4 0 build that he went for has to be boring <laughs> to play, but goddamn, it's not fun to play against. Yeah, it's super, it's super efficient. I don't know how to, yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. Well, congratulations on your game just now and thank you very, very much for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, you'll be playing again tomorrow against Alliance, so good luck on that series and perhaps we'll talk to you again after that one. Thank you very much, looking forward to it. Okay, have a good evening. And that was, of course, Hanskin from Ninjas in Pajamas. And uh, with all the series out of the way today, we can take a look at the standings where we finally have some points on the ranks. There, as uh, we have, of course, uh, four Clovers, 
on top. They both got two points, two wins. Uh, they two won. No, they won one both series, and Ninjas in Pajamas as well as Empire both got one, right. one as well. When you look at this, do yeah. you guys have any favorites? Like, do you, do you see anyone that you think is standing out, uh, like on the top? Yeah, four clovers. Well, <laughs> wow, she <laughs> right. zing. I'm gonna say right now, fourth to eighth place mm -hmm. is looking better than one to three. In really? the past of, I mean, this is what season. We're season four. Technically five. Five. Technically five. Yeah. Um, the teams I finished first and second is your six and two team. Well, not what? literally six and two, but a very high number in the beginning, only one or two loss. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, and getting first and second actually matters quite a bit because yeah. you skip. The first um, you just skip the first day. Yeah. First day, and there's some best of ones in those first days. You mm -hmm. don't want to be in those first days, so. Um, obviously, if you're a strong team, you finish like 10 and 2. That kind of goes hand in hand. So, you know, unless 4CL kind of tighten up their play, which it's a hard thing to do for their strategy and their lineup because like, they, they just go take big risk. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know. I, I don't think... I'm not going to... I'm, I'm going to think that 4CL will not finish first place. I'm going to say that out there, even though they're okay. first place right now. I think of that group, Virtus Pro stands apart for me. They were with the, yeah. one of the only other teams that did not change their roster yeah. uh, after TI. I think they've been looking pretty strong. They lost to Secret uh, a couple days ago in WCA qualifiers, but overall, I've got some faith in, in Virtus Pro. I, I think they're likely contenders for top two, if not top one. I think Vega looks pretty strong as well, actually. Yeah. Well, we'll see how they do in ESL VP, New York. That'll yeah. be a big test. Yeah. VP, Vega, and Alliance are my top three teams right now. The Alliance with there as well. Yeah. Well, Alliance are kind of. A little bit pet favorite, a little bit of nostalgia factor recently. Today, <laughs> they picked Lone Druid, I think. They did. Yeah, they, they lost. Yeah. They lost. Okay. Well, maybe not then. Maybe not top three. But they're Four picking Nature Sorry. Prophet, Bat Rider, Wisp, Nice Stalker mid. Uh, these are definitely our TI3 picks. So, I think they either see something that the rest of us don't, and they're just looking for that magic to make it work, or they're just living in the past, man. And I'm not I mean, sure which it is yet. They're trying to make it work, mm -hmm. and these are strong heroes. So, I think if they get like the Dark Series, really nice as well. When yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to actually see Alliance in action tomorrow because uh, we have two two big game series coming up for you then as well. It's going to be Empire taking on Monkey Freedom Fighters. That would be uh, Sing Sing's team. For those who don't know, Sing Sing, Mad, Necroman, Shokshka, as well as... Yapsor. Yapsor, thank you very much. And then our second series for tomorrow is going to be Alliance taking on Ninjas in Pajamas. So it's going to be the battle for the Swedish pride. We hope to see you all again then. It starts at 1800, where we'll be live here once again in the DreamHack Monster Energy Studio. And we'll see you tomorrow.